After wearing his White Lives Matter shirt with Republican Party propagandist Candace Owens at a Paris fashion event where he debuted the ninth season of his clothing line, which is great, by the way, we'll talk about that in a moment, Kanye West decided to then go to Twitter to declare war on Jewish people. Yeah. So how we got from White Lives Matter to Death Con 3 against Jewish people is a little bit of a complicated story, but it seemingly began when Puff responded to Kanye West's use of White Lives Matter via Instagram. And what he said was, I think, really thoughtful. Take a look. Um, I've always been there and I will always support my brother Kanye as a free thinker. But the White Lives Matter t-shirt, I don't rock with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not with it. And with the press and with fashion is doing, thinking it's a joke. But right now, all America has planned for us is poverty, incarceration, and death. So before I could get to any other lives matter, which all lives matter, you know what I'm saying? That black lives matter, don't play with it. If you can't, don't, don't wear the shirt, don't buy the shirt, don't play with the shirt. It's not a joke. Now, Kanye West did not like what Diddy had to say there. So Kanye West then decided to share his text exchanges between him and Diddy, where Diddy is presumably trying to get Kanye West to meet up with him to talk about their disagreement over White Lives Matter rather than doing this over social media. And Kanye West then responded by saying, quote, I'm going to use you as an example to show the Jewish people that told you to call me that no one can threaten or influence me. So the explicit implication is that Puff isn't just responding to Kanye West because he disagrees as a black man with the slogan White Lives Matter, but he's being controlled by Jewish people and they told him to say that and specifically to reach out to Kanye West. That's what Kanye West is saying. And he shared that text message thinking that he'd be able to cultivate sympathy after being brazenly anti-Semitic. He wasn't done though because he then took the Twitter to write this in a now deleted tweet after Twitter got rid of it. I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going to death con three on Jewish people in all caps. And he added, the funny thing is, I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew. Also, you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone whoever opposes your agenda. The grammar here makes this almost unreadable. He later added, who do you think created cancel culture? Oh, that's an easy one. Republicans. So that way they can claim that anyone who criticizes them over racism or homophobia or transphobia, well, they're just getting canceled. It's part of the culture war. It was PC correctness and all this. Now it's cancel culture. It is completely the creation of the Republican propaganda apparatus. But you can see what Kanye West is doing here because he's getting criticism because people oftentimes condemn him. Reasonable people condemn him. Well, it's all because of Jewish people. Now, I genuinely don't know what he means by Death Con 3. I don't know if he means Def Con 3. I don't know if he's creating his own word to declare war against Jewish people. Either way, what he's saying here is terrible. It's deeply, deeply anti-Semitic. And I want to share what Charlemagne the God said in response on The Breakfast Club to Kanye West because he was short but concise, but he eviscerated Kanye West. Yeah, how do you as a black man wake up and choose white supremacy? Like Kanye West woke up and just chose to be a Nazi one day. Like I wouldn't be surprised if he comes out and tells you how much he loves Hitler. Like in the span of a week, you use your energy to spew anti-black slogans and anti-Semitic rhetoric. Like you might as well call him KK Kanye at this point. I think that Charlemagne here is absolutely spot on. Kanye West is someone who tries to go out of his way to be intentionally provocative. He's worn the Confederate flag before. So he knows that by wearing a White Lives Matter shirt, you know, he is going to get a reaction from that. But the reaction, according to him, is not authentic. It's a reaction that is the product of Jewish people trying to control Kanye West. So because people denounced Kanye West's use of White Lives Matter on a t-shirt, well, that's not just people reacting to his stupidity. It's Jewish people trying to rein in Kanye West. That's the conspiracy theory. Now, other individuals like Candace Owens, they tried to defend 
Kanye West, believe it or not. Now, it's not the best defense ever because how could you defend what he tweeted? But nonetheless, it's a defense and take a look at what she had to say in response. So you have like reasonable, honest people like Charlemagne responding authentically, but then you have Candace Owens claiming that that type of response is not authentic. Let's watch. If you are an honest person, you did not think this tweet was anti-Semitic. You did not think that he wrote this tweet because he hates or wants to genocide Jewish people. This does not represent the beginning of the Holocaust. That's if you're an honest person, you'll meet that. You, you will admit that, right? If you're an honest person, when you read this tweet, you had no idea what the hell he was talking about. I had, I had no idea when I read this tweet what the hell he was talking about. This tweet inspired questions, not answers. First and foremost, what is Death Con 3? Did he mean Death Con 3? which would be a military defense position, not an offense for those of you that are offended, a military defense position. Is he tweeting this because he's reading the Newsweek headline, calling him an anti-Semitic? Is he angry because he can't believe that he's not free to talk about people in his life who happen to be Jewish, right, without being accused of anti-Semitism? Is he saying, I'm not going to shut up and I'm going to keep tweeting and I'm going to keep calling these people out referring to his friends that he feels slighted by. Is he talking about Jared Kushner and Josh Kushner? If you're a liar, you'll say, I know I was scared, Candace. I actually thought that Kanye West was going to launch a military strike in Israel because that's the reaction. Like when I woke up and I looked at the headlines, the reaction was like Kanye West had gotten together a military strike and it was going to go forward in the morning time in Israel. That was, that was the reaction that was met with this tweet. Now, once again, I want to make this very clear. This is not a defense of his tweet. This is an open question, which never seems to happen anymore. It's like you cannot even say the word Jewish without people getting upset in the same way that you're not allowed to say black anymore. His tweet was incoherent, yes. But Candace, he literally in that tweet accused Jewish people of trying to blackball anyone who opposes their agenda. And it's not just that tweet that makes his recent behavior anti-Semitic. It's him sharing a tweet or sharing a text between him and Puff saying that Puff is being controlled by Jewish people. You understand, right? Like, I get that Kanye West is not the brightest bulb, but to try to defend him by using the dumb defense. Oh, I don't know what the hell he means. That's still not a, not a defense. Being stupid is not a defense for bad behavior. And just for, you know, clarity's sake here, Kanye West is not stupid because he has mental health issues. I think that one might reasonably try to defend him because he suffers from bipolar disorder. And yes, that is a serious condition. I have a family member who suffers from bipolar disorder. I know people who have bipolar disorder. They don't get to use their disorder as an excuse to say deeply, deeply disgusting and anti-Semitic things. And aside from being bipolar, that doesn't give Kanye West an excuse to be nasty and say terrible things and also go after his wife. There are millions and millions of Americans with bipolar disorder who have to live normal lives, work a job, but because Kanye West, I think, is rich, people kind of extend this uh, sympathy to him. At least their fan, his fans extend this level of sympathy to him that just normal working class bipolar people don't get, right? So anything that they do, it's, you know, they get blamed for their bipolar. But when it comes to Kanye West, it's, oh, my God, he has bipolar. We should feel sympathy for him. No. And having bipolar is not an excuse for you just being an unintelligent person. And I think he is deeply unserious and deeply unintelligent. Right. So Kanye West, like he doesn't he isn't owed this extra level of sympathy because we're trying to not be ableist. No. He can have bipolar and we can feel sad that he has bipolar, but acknowledge that that is something that he doesn't get to use because normal bipolar people don't get to use that as well. But this individual is saying and doing terrible things and you still have his sims like Candace Owens, like members of his fan base defend him. And look, I used to be a giant fan of Kanye West, particularly his first stuff, like five albums. I loved him. He was my favorite artist of all time, but he's gone so far to this deranged territory that I don't even think I can enjoy his new art. I can enjoy his older art because the way that I rationalize it in my head is that that was a different kind of Kanye. He was 
reasonable back then before he tried to sell out to the right and grift with them. But I mean, nowadays I have no interest in his music because he's in a weird space, weird divorced dad energy time of his life where it's just toxic and, and gross. But this man thinks so highly of himself that he thinks he is a genius. And sure, he's talented when it comes to music, but he thinks a little bit too high of himself. So I want to get to the Paris Fashion Week uh, clothing line that he debuted because that right there should disprove this notion that Kanye West is a genius. So let's look at the designs that he debuted at the same fashion show where he wore this White Lives Matter shirt. You have an oversized poncho here that um, looks like shit and it's probably very, very expensive. I don't know who would want to wear this. You also have a uh, dress thing that kind of looks like a garbage bag. I mean, if you're going to cut somebody's hair, maybe you'd cut a hole out of a garbage bag and you put this over them to kind of capture the hair so it won't won't get on their clothes that's what that looks like to me you've also got a spaghetti strap tank top for men <laughs> very innovative and revolutionary i don't know how he came up with this damn you've got a puffy coat that looks like it was chewed up although it would be i think pretty pragmatic if you're trying to sneak snacks into a movie theater so that's one use for it now my absolute favorite of all time is what appears to be a spandex bodysuit thing that is modeled after a cat, I guess. And you can't really see that in this dark picture, but this is a more lighter image. I guess it's a cat suit of sorts. I, I don't really know what to make of this. Imagine buying that for like $500 because you know he charges an arm and a leg for that and practically trying to get through your day wearing that where it's like okay i've got a pee can you give me like 15 minutes so i can take off my entire spandex suit and then put it back on who would wear that who would who would buy that this is proof that uh rich people have too much money if they are indeed purchasing things like this but i don't know who would buy that and i don't know who would design this somebody who is deeply unserious and not very creative when it comes to fashion would do something like that. But, you know, uh, Kanye West, he thinks the world of himself. In his uh, Tucker Carlson interview, look at who he compared himself to. I'm not one of the people that go up and say, hey, I want to stop anybody from making money. The people that make money and the powers that be, I am your true Nikolai Tesla. And I'm not even a scientist. Bro, you make cat spandex suits. Stop, okay? Look, you can be a dumbass as Kanye West is and still have talent with regard to specific things. You can have talent when it comes to music, but that doesn't mean that you're a genius in every realm. Just because you're good at making music doesn't mean you're going to be an expert at baking or fashion. And he needs to stay in his lane and just make music when it comes to anything else, political commentary, his commentary on Jewish people. It's not very good. In fact, it's deeply, deeply problematic. So, I mean, Kanye West, the point that I'm making and talking about all of this is that this man is a clown. He is deeply unserious, deeply unintelligent. And anyone who tries to take him seriously at this point is also a clown. That includes people like Candace Owens, who tried to do a soft defense for Kanye West because, oh, you know, he's not being anti-Semitic. You're not an honest person if you think he's being anti-Semitic. You're an honest person if you admit that what he's saying doesn't make sense. Well, maybe he should be more clear. Maybe he should stay off of social media if the one thing that he returns to Twitter to do is spout off anti-Semitic, hateful bullshit. Because understand, the last time that he tweeted was in 2020. But he broke his non-Twitter streak to talk about going to DEFCON 3 against Jewish people. Yeah, Kanye West is absolute trash, and anyone who tries to defend him at this point is not to be taken seriously. But I love to see the right eat crow, because after they've been defending everything that Kanye West has been doing, because he's seemingly on their side, on their team, well, now all of a sudden, they're forced to backpedal because... How can you defend something so brazenly anti-Semitic? You can't. And so you see Fox News backpedaling now saying, mm, this is a really ugly tweet. And it's just, you know, it's a reason why you don't defend people who are very clearly not serious, not bright, and just trying to get a reaction from others.